All right, you're listening to the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast. On today's first 2018 podcast of the year, me and G Moody, last name rhymes with duty, yep. are going to do our thing rough, rugged, and raw without a bag. And we have special guest, shit-talking icon, a shit-talking Hall of Famer for sure, first ballot shit-talking Hall of Famer, and probably in the Comedy Hall of Fame, Wanda Sykes is going to rock with me, talk about her comedy specials, talking about coming up with new material, talking about her career, talking about the sexual climate in Hollywood between men and women and more. First ballot shit talker, funny ass Wanda Sykes is with me on the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast. But first, me and G Moody, last name rhymes with duty, are going to do our thing. Let's go. Let's do it. All right, let's be honest, Moody. You're supposed to brush your teeth for two minutes twice a day. But, but do you? Nah. And whether your answer is yes or no, or maybe you need a Quip electronic toothbrush. The electronic toothbrush that looks like it was designed by Apple and cleans like premium electric toothbrushes should, but without the high prices, okay? The Quip toothbrush is the best toothbrush in the world. Quip is the new electronic toothbrush that packs just the right amount of vibrations into an ultra slim design with guiding pulses to simplify better brushing at a fraction of the cost of bulkier brushes. Quip comes with a mount that goes right on your mirror fitting seamlessly into your daily routine. G. Yes. You have a Quip toothbrush. Hell yeah. I mean, your teeth, they look magnificent. White. They look fantastic. Yes. They look clean and they look strong. Yes, right. Quip also offers an optional subscription plan delivering new toothbrush heads on a dentist recommended three month schedule for just $5, including shipping worldwide. Mm. Quip starts at just $25. And then right now, when you go to getquip.com, that's getquip. G E T Q U I P dot com slash I am Rappaport to get your first refill pack free with a Quip electric toothbrush. Go to getquip.com slash I am Rappaport. Get the best electric toothbrush in the world. All right, we're here. 2018 is here, and the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast is here. I'm in the gloom tomb with G. Monetti. Yes. Do we even mention the fact that you're the three-time consecutive... Three chips. Podcast co-host of the year. No need to mention it, but you just did. (laughs) Do you think about getting a tattoo, maybe? Nah, man. Uh... Why rub, it, why rub it in people's faces? It's self-explanatory. Um, we're back. It's 2018. Um, of course, you hear that funk. That's G Moody Beats. Um, S- signature stuff. I hope everybody had a fantastic holiday, New Year's. But now it's over. Done. It's over. It's over. The, the, I, I give a three-day limit to the Happy New Year's. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. You could say, I don't want to hear a Happy New Year in two weeks. It's right. over. It's over. It's over. You can start preparing for Valentine's Day, whatever fucking other holiday floats your boat. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Happy Kwanzaa. Hanukkah. It's done now. It's done. We're in 2018. Um, so Gerald is here in Los Angeles, California. Yes. And uh, just, you know, very few hours ago, the full legalization of recreational marijuana Went down in the state of California. You happened to be here. When, yep. I didn't know what the fuck you were doing out here. And now I have to say. I was out here trying to cop me some of that piff. Okay. <laughs> so I've told you about this for years. You, you've seen me go into stores and get, uh, you know. And I was bugging out all the time. But you, you, you've now made your first journey into a legalized marijuana place in the state of California what was that like? It, it, it's a little surreal, right? It's it's a store with jars of different weed from all over. You could try it. You could touch it. It's beautiful. 
candy, you, you, you know, it's like, if you lotions, <laughs> lemonade, wines, potato chips. I mean, you could get crazy with it. Uh, you know, I think that stuff is fun, you know, but it, eventually you'll wind up finding your own niche and the stuff that you like. The, the, the interesting thing about it is, is like, when he says store, it, you know what? Most of the marijuana stores, it's not like going into Macy's. Mm -mm. It's like going into a boutique. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was good. I liked it. Um, did you find it like you were like, feel like almost like you were getting set up like, oh shit. Cause it's so <laughs> unusual right? for somebody who grew up in Brooklyn, grew up in New York city. Like, you know, I'm used to the, the legalized weed, but I remember, I remember distinctly the first time someone took me into a, a weed store. I was like, you feel like you're doing something wrong. Although you're play you're in right. a place where it's totally legal. Right. And now the state of California legalized recreational marijuana. Right. Decriminalized it. But there's a lot of people residing in prison for doing what the state has now said. Nothing changed with the weed, so now it's legal, right? And motherfuckers is in jail for yes. selling weed. Crazy. That's crazy. So the laws should be like, yo, if you got that on the books, man, y'all motherfuckers is out. <laughs> yeah, I, I I don't know how that's gonna play out. Um, you know, the, apparently the the state of California will have one billion dollars in in taxes that they will earn a billion. Yeah, from the legalized marijuana. Um, and like I said, you know, they got all sorts of you know. If, if you've never been into one of these uh, legal dispensaries, they should just call them marijuana boutiques because it's like it's like going into like a little boutique store. Most of them are small, mm -hmm. and even the bigger ones are they're they're not like like I said. I'm trying to. It's not like going into a supermarket. It's like going into a like a little a sort little of mom and pop stop. Yeah, they're they're really like mom and pop stops. Yep. Um, but it's all legal and and they're very friendly. They go out of their way, I think, to be friendly because they know how fucking we weird it is. And I'm not throwing anybody under the bus, but I do think nine out of ten employees in a legalized weed shop are stoned out of their fucking. Oh tree. yeah, yeah. They know. They try it all. Yeah, they're trying it all. They're eating the chips. They're drinking the drinks. They're 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 you know playing with the butter and the cookies and and the whole deal. Um, but. You had your first experience. Congratulations. I also want to say congratulations to the Minister of Defense, the two-time back-to-back I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast Fantasy Football Champion, Mr. Fucking Morris. Damn. Here at the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast, we pride ourselves on having the most corrupt fantasy football league in the world. <laughs> corrupt. And somehow, someway, Mr. Morris... Through all the corruption, all the, the 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 back alley plays, all the sort of the, the infighting, um, and, and everything that goes on in the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast Fantasy Football League has won two seasons in a row. Aaron, my man out in Chicago, and everybody else that participated, and I didn't, I know, I, I know that you're like, oh, you, you didn't name drop me. I I know I didn't name drop uh, my man in Vermont. <laughs> I didn't name drop. Everybody else in there, because I'm literally doing this without fact-checking. Right. Okay? There's no favoritism. The only favorite is the guy who won. Morris won the fucking league. I don't want to get into an argument with the rest of the rapper pack, the he, participants. He, Morris won. You're in a corrupt league. Don't break my fucking balls. Right. <laughs> don't bring more attention to the goddamn league than need be. But I will say this. Next year, I will be participating in the league. Okay, we will be highlighting the league even more. Damn. Okay? And 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 I, I plan on winning my own fucking league by hell or high horse. Okay? It's already corrupt as it is. Okay? But I plan on winning that fucking league by hell or high horse. I want to give my man, Greg, at Official Fantasy Rings a shout out. The best fantasy football rings in the world. Okay? And Morris now has two of them. Our oh. guy, Mr. Morris, has two rings. He's back-to-back. I wonder if he's going to try to three-peak the same way you did as the podcast co-host of the year three times in a row. <laughs> um, so I was in Palm Springs. I was at a country club. Oh, yeah. How was that shit, man? Yo. Fly shit. That country club life is, I mean, I always feel like someone's going to be like, even though you're a guest here and the people that you're visiting are part of the country club. We know you don't belong here. <laughs> they get that feeling from your ass. I, I got the feeling like I was I was on a, a short leash. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, so it was nice. I got to chill out, got to relax a little bit. 
Um, you know, enjoying that country club life. It's been a long year. Um, got myself a little massage. I did this cupping. Yeah, I saw your back all fucked up. What Yo, happened, B? But it was like a massage slash like, uh, you know, like the dude was like doing all kinds of wild shit to my feet. And then they do this cupping thing where they like, they like, they suction like, you know, like all the toxins out of you and, and you bruise. Obviously me, the way I bruise, it looks like I was like, I got fucking hit by a tractor. <laughs> right. Uh, um, and I, I still have the bruises on my back, but you know, it, it, homeboy, my man, Ron out there in Palm Springs, listen, I, I still don't know if it, if it, if it actually uh, helped or not, but I feel good since it. And I tell you one thing, my man Ron was, he was putting in that work. Oh. You should do it. Yeah. It, he's like rubbing your feet and stretching you in like the, it's, it's dope. And um, I see my man James Harrison of the New England Patriots. <laughs> I love Jay. That sounds crazy. You saw he was up there? <laughs> no, but he he's heavy into his cupping and his, um what is it with the needles, acupuncture and all that stuff. Oh. And uh, so I always see him on um, my man Debo. Debo. Debo is in fucking New England with the with the Pittsburgh playbook. That means another Super Bowl. It's it's over. It's over. The way things are going with the the New England Patriots with Tom Brady, and they're just Gronkowski's healthy. They have a week off. It's Belichick, over. Belichick orchestrated this it, coup. He contacted Jay, said, "Yo, come get this last chip." Before you go out. And of course, the Pittsburgh Steelers fans are burning James Harrison's jersey. And he's explained it. He said, yo, I wasn't playing. I told him I wanted to play. Right. I didn't want to be like a mascot. I, I could still play. Right. And he's part of the New England Patriots. Right. He's a hired gun. He left. He left. Right. And, and, the new, and, I, and I, I'm not going to say that I called it, but later this week, we have NFL Beast used to play for the Steelers, used to play for the Panthers, D'Angelo Williams. Mm. Okay. He's on the podcast, and I texted him, and I said, yo, your guy Debo is going to play for the Patriots. And oh, he you was said like, that? I said it. Damn. I, I said it the, as, soon as, he got, as soon as he got released by the, the Steelers. Right. I was just like, I had a feeling it was going to happen. And, and, I mean, listen, with or without James Harrison, the, the, uh, the, pa the Patriots, barring injury, I, I don't see who's going to beat them. If Tom Brady gets hurt... Who is? There's no more quarterbacks. They gave all. No, they got. They got. <laughs> they got a guy. Okay. Listen, if Tom Brady gets hurt, that's it. They ain't winning. Yeah, but but it's a big if. Somebody gonna get to him. Yo, even when they got to him last year in the Super Bowl in Atlanta, if you remember, they were hitting him. Yeah. And in the second half, they were hitting him. They never get that that head shot on shot. him. Like they get to him, and it's like last minute. They might push him down. They might. But yo, they don't, yeah, they don't you think I want the Patriots to win? Hell no. They don't get the Jim Burke type of shot. No. We want that. Helmet in your fucking back. I, I don't see how it's <laughs> going to happen. The wild card games are coming. The Titans are playing the Chiefs. The Falcons are playing the Los Angeles Rams. We got my man Jared Goff on the Rams. The Bills fucking they made it. fell into the playoffs. The Jacksonville <laughs> Jaguars are in there. They Blake Bortles, he stinks. Yeah, they're in there though. They're in there. He stinks. I can't. St he stinks. I don't know how. I don't. The Bills versus the Jaguars is a crazy game. And then of course we have the Panthers. Cam Newton versus our New Orleans Saints. We have a soft spot for New Orleans Saints. They're down with us now. They're down with us. Yeah. As as much as I I, I love the, the 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 wonderful wacky wild world of Cam Newton, I'm a Saints fan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we, we we know the Sean Payton episode was was iconic. Everybody saw the video. Went to the practice. You saw it all. Mm -hmm. I mean, how could we not root for our guy, Sean P? Yeah, yeah. And I saw Tampa Bay. At the end of the game, they were celebrating. They were like, and I was like, and then I look at their record. It's four and six. Why are they celebrating? And you're not in the playoffs. I'm no, figuring it was four and six. Four and nine or some shit. I saw the man, the Tampa Bay Bucks, Jameis Winston, they was all on the sideline. And now look at their record. They're celebrating, and it's 5 and what, 11? 5 and 11. They had the hard knocks curse. <sighs> Mike well, Evans is a friend of the podcast. I fuck with Big Mike. But and the Cleve Buccaneers. <laughs> Cleveland Brown. 0 oh, and 16. And that guy, they, they would have won that game yesterday. 
Young blood. He dropped Money the pass. Money dropped the ball. You couldn't catch it for Hugh Jackson, man. He's 0-16. Maybe if they would have got a win, he could have some kind of negotiation. Look, we won the last game. You dropped it. You fuck. <laughs> catch the ball, Duke. Catch the ball, man. Save the black coach's job. Well, what about your guy Marvin uh, Marvin Lewis in, in Cincinnati? He stepped down. Uh, oh, man. You talk about affirmative action. <laughs> yo, he, he, yo, he had more chances than anybody. Yo, what kind of city is that? Do you allow a guy who never made the fucking playoffs? No, never won a game in the uh, playoffs. <laughs> what, and, and the fan base, y'all not outraged by that? Did this shit have happened five years ago. Yeah, what the fuck? Who cares if he's a great guy and a model citizen? The I don't team give, sucks. We didn't, we didn't hire him for that, for his, for, he's a great guy. We want some wins, yo. Run for fucking mayor, man. Yeah. They're talking about, you know who they're talking about? Uh, you know, there's all kinds of rumors now. They're talking about um, Matt Patricia, my man, the defensive coordinator of the New England <laughs> Patriots with his pencil. Yo, Matt Patricia, I'm going to tell you right now, if you, if you become the New, York, the New York Giants head coach, and I know it's two months away because the playoffs are going to take us all the way into February. Yo, you need to come see me first, dude. <laughs> You're not doing all that bullshit with the... With the beard and the pencil, you need to change your whole look. You coming, yeah, you coming home, you coming to New York. Clean your shit up, yeah. man. Um, a lot, a lot of blowback. A lot of blowback what from that? the I Am Rapport Stereo Podcast fans. Oh, man, people are so offended by my choice. Sportsman of the year. <laughs> oh, they were? <laughs> oh, man, how could you? What are you doing? You're turning the Iron Rapport Stereo podcast in a mo- into a mockery. Jesus. What am I supposed to do? Give it to Tom Brady? Yeah. Give it to LeBron James, Kevin Durant, like every other goddamn publication in the world? <laughs> we gave it to the cokehead offensive lineman of the Miami Dolphins. <laughs> Who else are we supposed to give the sportsman of the year, the first ever Iron Rapport Stereo podcast? Sportsman of the year, and people are offended. You were shocked. Yeah, man. You can't. This guy's drug usage. It seems like you're kind of promoting that. I'm not promoting it. I never. How can he win? How can he win? He was guy's great. (laughs) He's great. (laughs) Your man Steve Bannon is on the cover of Newsweek. He threw his hat in the ring. Seems like right. Steve Bannon. I don't want to get into the politics early. It's early in the year. Yeah. I'm going to tell you something right now, Steve Bannon. You never, ever, ever, I don't care what kind of fly shit you read all these Shakespeare books and these history books, there's no way even the most Republican Republican will vote you in. And it comes down to one simple reason. You look like shit, mm-hmm. Duke. Yeah, yeah. You, can, you need to wash your face, man. Duke, you look like shit. Yeah. <laughs> You're never going to be the president. I don't even care the most staunch Republican. You might be kicking the flyest shit. Yeah. You look like shit, dude. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. He knows it, too. There's no way other countries' leaders are going to be looking at you. Yeah. And t- it's, yo. His face is flaking. Like, it should be flaking off. How you going to, how, you, he sees this in the mirror. My man, you look like shit. Yeah. You got, your diet is fucked up or something. You look like you, yo, you eating TV dinners, <laughs> rotten TV dinners. Swats and bullshit. Yeah, back you look in the day. fucked up. Steakums and shit. That's don't, what it, don't waste your time and waste people's times because you're going to disappoint Republicans with that shit. Yeah, they, they not nominate you for nothing. No one can look you in the face. Yeah, what's wrong with him? Why is his skin bubbling? You know, I thought I saw Steve Bannon at a restaurant in LA. No bullshit. Uh, I saw a guy... Um, from about 30 feet away, and I was like, yo, that's Steve Bannon. <laughs> like he's a fucking monster. Yo. yo. <laughs> and 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 then I got as he got close, I was like, it isn't him. But the guy had the same hair. Right. He was a little bit more handsome. Obviously, he didn't look like his face had gotten uh, uh, burnt and then <laughs> peeled. And then like they sent him out into the fucking public. <laughs> but it was bugged because because he was, I knew, knew right away, but like the guy had like the army jacket, the same kind of clothing, the colors that he wears all the time, like those browns and the dark grays and that dingy look. Right. And it was crazy because I literally had a visceral reaction to this dude. Oh, really? Like, like I, I was like, yo, I said to myself, yo, if, if this had been actual Steve Bannon in the restaurant. What you would have said to him? I'd have had to say something yeah, to him. You would have had to say something. How could you not say something to right. him? 
Like you can't come like in normal parts of the world and like not like because because my man saw him at a restaurant in New York. Really? And they said they kind of whisked him in the back. So I, I get it. But I was like, yo, if I saw him, you had to. Just yeah. like if I saw like Scaramucci, like Scaramucci's on the internet the other day. He's like, oh, what was the greatest thing that happened to you in 2017? I'll share my motherfucker. <laughs> I don't fuck with, I like Mooch. You like Mooch? I don't fuck with Mooch. I like Mooch. I ain't got shit to say about him. (laughs) But like, yo, Mooch, shit ain't sweet. (laughs) Yo, he did. He helped this man out. Like, if if you're a president, you put me down, I'm going to help you out, bro. Thank you. (laughs) Um, What else? I wanted to say something about this, too. Listen, I don't want to go into sexual allegations and, and sexual assaults of 2017, but I was thinking about this. You know, they eliminated all of they took it off. All of Louis C.K.'s stuff off of HBO. Wow. And certain places, they've they've pulled it. And and I was thinking to myself, that shit ain't right. I, that's what I've been saying, man. That's what like, I've been saying. You, you could penalize people. You could ostracize people. But you can't act like they didn't exist. Right. You can't act like his work didn't exist. Because if that's the case, you should no longer listen to Miles Davis music. You know, you should no longer listen to a lot of rappers who brag yeah. about selling crack cocaine to innocent people. <laughs> right. Albert Einstein was fucking with his cousin. That's, that's real. Jesus. He was a nasty fuck. Yeah. First of all, he's in the Stickman Hall of Fame because he was getting it in. Mm-hmm. But he was also married or had an affair with his own cousin. He fucked with his cousin. Yo, he Albert, married. Einstein, Albert Einstein was wild. So what are you going to do? Yeah. Look at all the stuff that he brought to the world. Yeah. You're going to just not use it? You can't just pick and choose. Good point. I mean, listen, they Miles did. Davis, he talks about beating women. Right. What are we going to do? Take, uh, take all his music out oh, of like yeah. a, uh, iTunes and all that right. shit? Right. Like, I'm not even saying like you could say what you want about. I'm not. This is even about Louis C.K. or whatever, but his, his work has been taken off of HBO, taken off of FX. Like, it doesn't exist. It exists. Try to wipe Wipe the guy out. And people should have the right to choose if they want to watch it or not. And then they were like, well, we have the right to choose if we want to support him or not. Yo, oh, that's fine. You have a right to choose, right? But HBO, I, I don't... He, he did the stuff. It's in the past. You know, that's what he did. That's... And <laughs> Louis C.K. said... He asked the women. <laughs> he asked them. Doesn't mean he's not sick. Right. But he did ask. He did ask. <laughs> All right, let's get into Wanda Sykes. We got the great Wanda Sykes Mm -hmm. coming up now. Crazy funny. Crazy funny, fantastic shit talker, fearless, iconic Wanda Sykes with me on the I Am Rappaport Stereo Podcast. Let's go. Listen, believe it or not, the playoffs are here. That means there are so many big football games, but also basketball games and hockey games you could score big on every day. Okay? Man up and play like the pros on game day. You can play the money line, the side, or total. My bookie, my bookie is your hookup for all of your betting needs and offers a super fast payout when you win. That means you play, you win, you get paid. Man up and play like the pros on game day. Where you bet is just as important as who you're betting on. Okay, and if you want to make money betting in the games, you got to go to mybookie.ag. It's the only site that I recommend, okay? Monetti, I trust them, okay? Mm -hmm. But if you don't trust me, just try them out for yourself. Take my, you don't have to take my word for it. Go to them and check them out for yourself. They have odds on every matchup and a mobile site that makes wagering on your smartphone a breeze. If I could figure it out, you could figure it out. Join now and my bookie will match your deposit with up to a 50% bonus. 50%! 50. Visit mybookie.ag today. Like I said, you play, you win, you get paid. No questions asked. Go to mybookie.ag today. Hello? Wanda, it's Mike Rappaport. Hey, Michael, how you doing? I'm good, how you doing? Good. Sorry, I'm a little late. No, no, no. It's all right. I'm uh, I'm glad you actually called late. I had this fucking iPhone 10 piece of shit that cost me twelve hundred dollars. <laughs> this fucking thing doesn't work, or I don't know how to work. It's a real piece of shit. So, I I, I actually just got it fixed, uh, figured out because I was afraid you were gonna go right to voice voicemail. 
Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I heard a lot of people complaining about that. About that new iPhone. Yeah, it's it's a piece of shit. You know, it's a twelve hundred dollar piece of shit. And <laughs> you know, going to the iPhone store, the Apple store, it used to be a pleasant experience, and now that's shit. It's like going to like a low end uh, supermarket in Washington Heights or something like that. <laughs> you know, they got that supermarket attitude. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> what was that? What was that place I used to? Oh man, what was it? Um. Something foods. Whole uh, foods. I lived, no, not whole no, foods. No, 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 no. Whole no. Fu- no um, it, was, they're, they're, it was orange and blue. I think was there. It was because I, I used to live on Upper West Side. I, I know exactly and, what you're talking about. You know what? Yeah, they had that attitude. Like we rather let this food rot than sell it to you. Yeah, we don't want to talk to you. Don't ask us questions. Right, we don't right. know where the paprika is. Don't fucking right. speak to me. <laughs> <laughs> What, what what are you up to? What, what are you working on? You're you're producing the Roseanne show now. Yeah, I'm uh, consulting on that um, on the reboot of that show, um, and it's really cool. It's real cool because it's you know they got everybody back, man. They got the original cast back, and um, and Bruce Helford, mm. he's he's EP in the show, and Bruce Helford did my first uh, sitcom, Wand at Large. That's cool. So yeah, so he he reached out and said, hey, you know. You know, Roseanne loves you and and, you know, we would love to have you come over, even if you could just do like two days a week for us and just be in the writer's room and, you know, just be around and, you know, help us out on it. So I, I've been having a ball over there. Are they actually shooting right now? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I think we have like two more episodes left. We um, don't. Yeah, because we're uh, shooting today and then tomorrow is from the audience and then we have one more episode. That's it's supposed to be eight, but now it's nine. Yeah, that, that's cool. I'm I'm sure that's going to be a like a big hit because people are going to love the show. Yeah. When you're producing, do you want to get out there and do your thing, or are you like able to sort of switch off into producer writing mode as opposed to like you know look wanting to be on the court playing you know in front of the crowd getting the laughs? You know what I'm saying? It's funny because like we they tape in front of an audience on Friday nights, and I've only been to one. Of the of the actual taping, because well, one because there's not really a lot for me to do on those on those nights because you know the show is pretty much you know locked. So, um, but man, it, it is hard to stand on the sidelines and watch them do that, and especially you know Lori Metcalf, who is just I, I think she's one of our best actors that we have you know out there she's just amazing Mm -hmm. and uh so just to stand around watch them it it, you know it's it's like put me in coach you know know, it's hard to stand on the sidelines and watch but um especially when it's at that caliber you know of talent um but i but i love it though but then again there's nothing like watching you know roseanne deliver something that you wrote and it gets a big laugh so um but yeah you do want to be out there doing it Hey, let me ask you a question because th- this happened to me, and and they, they they said that they brought it up to you. Do people actually ask you if you can work or not even work, like talk or go on talk shows without cursing? Because I just did the Wendy Williams show for the first time, and and I'm back there getting ready to do my thing, and the producer comes over to me and he says, you know, we just want to you know tell you you can't curse on the show. It's daytime talk show, and I was like. <laughs> I fucking know that. And then, and then like, well, the lawyer's upstairs and they just wanted to send that note down. And I said, are you fucking kidding me? And they're like, no, you know, they saw your videos and they, they, they're they fans of yours. And I said, I, I thought it was a joke. And I said, am, am I the only one you ever, you said that to? And they said, no. And I said, well, who else did you say that to? And they said, well, we actually said the same thing to Wanda Sykes. And I was like, what'd she say? And they said, well, Wanda told to fuck off. So like, is that is that a true story? And do people like ask you if you could like, Actually, because to me, I'm like, do you think I'm like a savage? Like, I guess I know how to curse and I could, you know, but I'm a professional person. You know what I mean? Like, right. do, is that a real story that happened? Dude, that is exactly what happened. And I was, I was just like, like how, how you reacted. Just so fucking offended. Like, <laughs> who, the, who the hell do you think I am? Like, first of all, I've been, I've been in this business, you know, 20 plus years, you know, and actually 30 years. And, and you gonna come to me and <laughs> tell me. Something that that everybody knows, like, hey, don't curse on, you know, you can't curse. And I, I, I was just so annoyed. I told, I told, get the fuck out of my room. <laughs> I, I, told, I told the lawyer, I said, get the fuck out of here. 
and uh and, and everybody just like like oh damn because they haven't heard me like snap off on somebody like that especially in that setting because but it but it just required that because it's it was just really uh just insulting that they they think that we don't know that you know Right. I, I, I thought it was funny, but when they told me that they asked you, I actually took it as a compliment. I was like, all right, well, if you ask Wanda. <laughs> so Wanda, one of the things, I, you know, I told you this when, when I met you at the Stern Show, I'm such a fan of yours and you are like a great shit talker. You know, like your, your comedy is biting. <laughs> you talk your shit. You know, when you present yourself as Wanda Sykes, you talk your shit. You play characters that talk your shit. We're in a climate right now where... We have so many more forums to talk shit, but the reins are getting tighter on what's acceptable. What, right. What is your take on that in terms of like, you could, you could go on Twitter, you could go on Instagram, you know, you could go on talk shows, you know, like you could put out a video, boom, and if you talk the right shit, it could go viral, but the backlash on what's acceptable has gotten tighter. So it's like a weird thing. And, and you're sort of known for like hitting straight down, you know, straight down the middle and going, you know, for the blood and guts, you know, when you're doing your comedy, what is your take on that and where we're at? Well, to me, like, I, I don't have a problem with it, you know, because, um, I think we're just in the, in the same, like, like sensibilities and all, right? Like when we talk shit, it's justified. It's like I'm if 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 you talk shit and you can't back it up, or if you just saying stuff that's just like wrong, then yeah, you're gonna get you're gonna get called on it. But if you to me, it's it's, it's all about the truth that you're speaking. It's hard. Mm. It is hard. It's hard to shut down truth. You right. know, I mean, ex except in this climate, because people just say that it's not you know it's fake news or whatever. You know, but when you're right, you're right. And and, and if, as long as I know I'm on, I'm, you know, saying what's right and on the right side of a of a, uh, you know, of, of a principle or something, if, if then, hey, I'm you're not going to shut me up. I'm going to mm -hmm. keep talking shit. <laughs> but it's the people. Out, but the problem is, it's the people out here who are just nuts, man. The stuff people are, are saying and, and believing you're just like and, and, and then when it comes from the top, you know. When when you when you have your have the 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 guy that they call the president, mm -hmm. you know, tweeting fake shit, then what the problem is is that now these people who are just crazy, you know, and and uh, uh, uh racist now they just feel more emboldened to just be wrong, you know. I, I think that's that's what that's the problem is like the the people who are just wrong and crazy and racist like they have the megaphone right now, right? You know. Yeah, it's it's crazy. I mean, I never I'll be honest, I never spoke on politics like I just, you know, I vote with my heart. I don't even vote with my taxes. Right. I, I voted for Obama. I voted for Clinton when I could first vote. And, and you know, I like I, I feel fortunate that, you know, I could, you know, like if the taxes are good, they're good. If, if I got to pay a little bit more, I pay more. I'm not voting for a motherfucker just so I could, you know, save, you know, X amount of money. Right. Uh, you know, I, I mean, have you always you know, spoken out on politics or is it just like, you know, currently? Because the last year, it's not even a year, in the last year, the whole landscape has changed. The whole fucking landscape on what yeah. I think about. What I never watch fucking CNN, MSNBC, Fox <laughs> News. Like, I never, I have ESPN on all fucking day. Now I got to turn to ESPN to like get caught up on, on the shit that I really love. Like, right. where where's your head on, on everything that's going on politically? See, I'm I'm kind of like the, the the reverse of you because I love politics. I mean, going back to you know like the, the first Bush. I mean, I've I've always been into politics and and would be on top of stuff and you know just I I I would have I had Fox News on when when the second Bush was in office. That's I mean I would watch Fox News all the time and um and you know, I just was into it and just into it and then. When, you know, this guy comes along, it just turned everything upside down. And to me now, it's just so painful to watch the news. You know, yeah. it, it, it's just like, what the hell? What? No, this this cannot be right. And I, I, I'm yelling at the, you know, at the, at the story. I'm yelling at the reporter for because I don't understand why people can, can just sit there and let people tell us lies, you know. 
if like like why aren't these people like shutting the shit down? Like if someone is is I'm interviewing somebody and they say something that I know is absolutely wrong. When you like, when you just tell them, like, get the fuck out of here. Mm-hmm. I mean, when, when you like go, wait, whoa, 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 no, not, but they just skip over it just to get to their next question. Mm-hmm. So that drives me nuts. So now I'm more like all about, you know, uh, trying to find something else, so trying to find something else to watch. I, I'm watching 90 Day Fiance and, <laughs> you know, all, all kind of, you know, crazy stuff. You know, it's like, I, I, I tell myself, I wish I could wake up. And be more concerned about, you know, uh, you know, who who's Remy Ma beefing with right now, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's, instead of, you know, what rockets, uh, you know, Kim Jong Il, he's launching. You know, I I, uh, I I wish I could have another distraction, but like even with my stand up, I'm trying to do trying to do more things away from politics because I know people are dying to get away from it. You know, it's like. It is driving people nuts. So so they want to escape. They, they want to hear something else. But, you know, it, when, like you said, when you're passionate about something, it's hard for me to do. You know, I'm, I'm sitting here trying to make jokes and but not trying to, you know, do politics. Like I, I, I wrote a joke just a few minutes ago. I was like, yeah, I love living in L.A. Actually, I've been busy um, building a uh, an addition to my house. You know, it's, uh, you know, it, it, what's the cause? It's not a. Not a not a uh, an entertainment room. What is it? Uh, oh yeah, a bomb shelter. A bomb <laughs> shelter. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> yeah. So and it's so you know that's so that's where I'm trying to to take it where we can laugh, but it's not. I'm not out there going, hey, Donald Trump's gonna get us all killed. Do you, you know? like? Because you've been doing comedy for so long, and and you know through you know Bush and Obama. I mean, and and, and politics has always been a part of comedy. You know, whether you're right. making, you know, impressions of presidents. Do you find it right now that it's less in the comedy clubs? And and because of that, the reason that people that you were just saying that people want to get away from it? Or is it, is it like, because I, I was doing a live podcast and I'm not a comedian, but I mentioned Trump. And I think I was in Minnesota. And like, and you know, I, I, I'm not seasoned live stage, but I, I just mentioned it. And like, I felt like, like I felt like the fucking room like brace up and i don't know if they were pro trump not pro trump and i was like i learned a lesson i was like yo just leave that shit alone but like do you find that it's different now with politics r- currently right now where we're at oh definitely man definitely definitely it's it's crazy how it, it's it's all about your audience now right if if i if i'm doing a show and it's wanna sites live come see wanna sites mm-hmm. Now, I feel like, okay, these people are here to see me. They know what they're going to get. Mm-hmm. They know what I'm about. Mm-hmm. So I can go out there and pretty much free reign, say what the hell I'm going to say. Right. And there, there, there'll probably be a handful of people who, who you know, won't like it, who will probably get up and be like, damn it, I thought this was going to be barred from the new adventures of old Christine mm-hmm. or, uh, or shit, this isn't the, this isn't the you know, the the shit talking from the Larry uh from uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm, you know, they'll, they'll, they might just walk out because they came to see me from so, for something else. Mm-hmm. This ain't blackish, you know. Mm-hmm. So most of the people are there because they know what they're gonna get. Now, if I'm if I'm in New York and I'm going down to the comedy cellar, I don't know. I don't know if these people are pro Trump or if they they want to hear politics or right. whatever. So so now I gotta shift gears. And try to do a set that I think will, you know, that the entire audience will enjoy. I got now, you. Now, is is that fun for me? Hell no. Mm. I'd rather be able to go on stage and say whatever the hell I want to say. And that's usually what I end up doing and why I usually end up <laughs> getting in trouble. You, you, so, you you're, so you'll wind up just doing your thing and trying to sort of push through the audience to get to work on your right. shit or, or just your attitude, like who you are as a person, like, fuck that. I need to get this off my chest. I, I, right. I, I'm going to say it. Right. Right. Because it feels so forced. Yeah. If I, I don't mean. talk about it, you mm-hmm. know, if, if I'm, if I go on stage and I don't mention anything political, it feels like somebody wrote something for me to say. I got you. Like it was a hostage situation, you know, I got you. I got yeah. you. Uh, uh, Wanda, you think there's ever going to be a female president of this country? Yes. 
Yeah. Do you think it'll I be think so. like while yeah. we're alive? While we're alive? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think so. Because, I mean, all this shit that's going on, man, with the, you know, the the uh, the sexual harassment and, and uh, suit and all that and and how much, um, you know, they're, they're after women as far as, you know, reproductive rights. Mm. That, you know, we get we ain't getting paid the same money and everything. It's making women um, mobilize and, and they're, they're running for office They're You know, we picked up some some uh, some uh, seats by, by females all across the country, mm -hmm. you know, this past election. So, yeah, I think I think it's going to happen. And, uh, and, it, and be ready for Beyonce, man. President Beyonce. Do you think there'll be a That's black a woman <laughs> as president before a, a, a white woman? Yeah, I do. You, you think it would be a black woman first? Yep. Yep. You, white women put Trump in office. Come on, we can't trust them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I, I agree, man. Can't trust them, <laughs> man. I agree. <laughs> yeah. Black women, black women get it right. We... 99% of the time, black women get it right. I, I hear you. Yo, I mean, I don't know who it's going to be. And I mean, I, I would love nothing more than Michelle Obama. I don't think she wants to do it. but nah, I would love, she, she wouldn't want to do it. She wouldn't want to do it. Have you, have, you right. ever, have you ever met her? Yes. You, you yeah, met I, her I did, and, and Barack? Yeah, I did the correspondence dinner. Oh, shit. So so what are they the, like? His first, his first year. Yeah, I, I did it. So, um, amazing. Amazing. They they're just so cool, man. They they're just you know they just feel like real people, mm -hmm. you know. And when they talk to you, they are looking at you. They're making a connection. They're mm -hmm. talking to you. They're not like looking past your that you know your shoulder like that Hollywood stuff, looking to see who else is in the room that they need to go talk to. Mm -hmm. You know that yeah, like you you can really have you have a moment with them. And they're, did they know just, who you were? Like they knew your stuff. Yeah. That's yeah, well, I, I mean, I, when I, I walked in, you know, because we had like this reception before the the actual program began, and, uh, and and President Obama walked over to me. He goes, "Hey, my favorite comic, how you doing, Wanda?" It's like, you know, he's like, "Thanks for doing this," and also, and you know, it, it was just real cool. He's yeah, they're just they just cool people. You know, it's funny because so many of my friends. Have, have, have got to meet Obama, got to go to the White, like pretty much everybody in Hollywood. Got to go to you know correspondent dinners, play ball, this event, and I'm like the only motherfucker who didn't get a chance to make it to the white. Like I mean, everybody met Obama except for me. Now I'm the only motherfucker who didn't who didn't get to meet him. Come on, man, you should have been somebody's plus one. Some on. something shit. What, what is your take? You're a female. You're a black female. You're a shit talking machine. What is your take on? All this craziness. It's like every single day, the sexual allegations, uh, uh, the Harvey Weinstein, the, the the Russell Simmons, they got my man Matt Lauer, they got old ass Charlie Rose. What is you? What is your take on this? Like you know, because because for me, it's like yo, if you're putting your hands on somebody and you're harassing somebody, they're, they're, you know, you got to pay the price. But it's like. These things, like these things, are happening so quick, and it's like all of a sudden, in the last three months, all the rules have changed. Now they should have been changed in the past, but it's like people were only sort of playing by the rules that were allowed. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. What is well, your take seems, on the whole thing? Yeah, it seems like the, the the rules have always been the rules, just that you know nobody was playing by them. Mm. You know? Yeah. And and. Um, I, first of all, I'm, I'm glad that it's happening. And I think it is, uh, the, the first thing, the trickle down, uh, theory has ever worked because this is coming from, from, from Trump. And I think be because of that, like I said, women are now stepping up and saying, you know what, this, this is some bullshit. We, we can't let this go. And, and, and there's been so many women being, that have been left back and, and, and good men too. There's a lot of good dudes out there, just good guys. I work with a lot of good guys and and I and I see how they get shut down because they're trying to play by the rules, mm. you know, and it's all these these power hungry, nasty ass bastards out here who are just just fucking it up for everybody, mm. you know, and now people are people are speaking up and you, and you think about how like women you know, par for the course, it's like they just thought, oh, well, shit, well, this is what you're supposed to be doing. This is this is this is just how the game works. 
And now finally somebody said, no, here's the rule book. This is this is how it's supposed to go. Right. Right. I got and you. Now, yeah. So now people are speaking out and go, oh, shit. And, and now people are listening and, and actually things are happening. You know, there, there's a lot of dudes out there thinking twice before they pull out their dick at work. <laughs> They're like, oh, OK, wait a minute now. Oh, shit. OK. So, um, I'm, you know, like I said, I'm 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 happy about it. Who are your top five? Always like they always do this as rappers or basketball players. Who are your top five comedians like of all time that you love that inspired you that that spoke the most mm. the most to you? Um, uh, uh, you? You could even do six. You could do a six man off the bench. Who who would be your top five and a cherry on top? Okay, Richard Pryor. Yep. Uh, George Carlin. Mm. Uh. Oof. Okay, Rich Pride, George Pride, Mom's Mabley. Mm. It's interchangeable. You don't have to. You don't worry if you leave anybody out or forget. Okay. Somebody. All right. It's, All right. It's today. Gonna, top five today. Got to put Chris Rock in there. Mm-hmm. And shit. <laughs> I'm just, you know, I'm. I mean, there's there's different people make me laugh at different things. Um. Robin Harris, mm. just he will. I, I bust the gut. Bernie Mac, mm. bust the gut. Um, Eddie Murphy. Mm. I mean, he was, you know. Um, so I, I guess I got to look at the, the 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 you know their, their whole body of work. You know, those are good names. Who are? Right, let me yeah. let me. If if you're at a comedy club. You're, mm-hmm. you're, you know, because all you guys, you go and you work out at the clubs, whether L.A., New York, wherever the places are. Who's the one person now? Off, not any one of those people you that are obviously living. Who's the one person now? It could even be a lesser known person that you're like this motherfucker. I'm gonna stay. I'm. I wanted to go home and go to sleep, but I'm gonna stay and watch this person. Like who's exciting to you now? Younger people, or even just you know, like who plays the clubs? Who who you love to watch? Yeah, yeah. That, you know what? Because it, it's hard. Because when I'm in in this in this mode I, I'm in right now, you know, I'm trying to you know, like write new material and stuff. Mm-hmm. I try not to watch a lot of other comics I got because, you. you know what I'm saying? You don't want to, yeah, you don't want to like, like, you know, accidentally, you know, just, you no, know, I got get you. influenced or something. Yeah. I so, got you. But uh, there, there's a lot of people make me laugh. Like, the, you know, like, uh, um, uh, Dominique, Dominique Witten, she, she makes me, she, I can watch her all the time. She makes me crack up. When you're writing, like for instance, mm-hmm. like two of the bits from from I'm a BB that were dope. Uh, but by the way, have you been to the waxer lately? Uh, this is an actual. <laughs> have you been to the waxer lately? When was the last time you get waxed, or when is oh, your next no. appointment? <laughs> oh, I, I, that's it. That's it. That shit is brutal. No, mm-hmm. thank you. So, but when you're doing a bit like that one or the black verse gay bit, do you physically actually either write or type something down? Is it in your head? Does it come from like riffing on stage? How does, how does a bit that makes it to one of your specials make it there? Like what, what, what is the origins of it? And, and, and then how does it actually get crafted to become an actual bit that you, you, you feel really confident about? Yeah, that, that bit... It, I mean, it usually all my best usually it comes from something that really happened, you know, and it, that's what happened. I, there's a, a friend. She has a, 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 you know, like a spa thing in her house. And I was like, all right, I'm, I'm going to go try this. And so it, you know, it, it starts from there. So, yeah. And, and I and when if it's something like that, that's a story. So that's something that happens. But uh, the other bits is usually. You know, it's from something else, like uh, something I saw on TV or uh, a news story or something I read or, or you know, article or um, something that, you know, happened uh, with the family or something. And, and I, I'll, I'll jot it down or, I'm, or I make a note in my phone, you know, and I'll make a note in the phone, say, OK, this thing happened. And then I'll I'll go back to it and I'll write something else on it. And then when I have like the, the germ of the idea, then I'll, you know, I'll take it to the stage and play with it on stage. And, you know, it, t- it takes me like, a, a, you know, a good two years of, of really touring Wow. before, yeah, before I'll, you know, put it out there as a special. The way you flipped it in that bit, the black versus gay and the coming out and not having to come out as black and the, 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 the sort of using it as, I mean, 
that was so good and 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 it was so crafted i mean that to me is like comedy you know like to, that to me is like it's not just being funny like that is like a stand up comedian up there kicking ass so i mean i i just think you're so Thanks, dope I, I honestly i think you're so dope and uh you know i appreciate you coming on wanda i know uh oh, the fans appreciate are, you. yeah I, I love all your shit i love your fearlessness i love that you know just yeah, i just i'm just such a fan so i appreciate you coming on wanda Oh, thank you, Michael. I, I I love you, man. You you know you all you always been been that guy, the dude that's you know just uh just flow. You know you just roll with us. I, I love you for that. Just uh just a good man. All right, well I appreciate it. Well, uh, uh, Wanda, listen, good luck with everything, and stay in touch with me. And if you ever need anything from me, I mean I'm easy to find, and and, and just you know keep kicking ass. Oh, likewise, man. You too. All right, I'll thanks, Mike. Okay. Thank you. Bye. All right, I want to thank our guest, Wanda Sykes, for rocking me on the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast. Me and G. Moody, we're back. We're going to close this already iconic episode with the first 2018 Sick Fucks of the Week. (laughs) Cue the music. This award is earned, not given. It's called the Sick Fuck of the Week. This guy is really sick. Lock him up. How could you do it? Don't let him out. Damn. You fucked the dog? You what? You fucked the dog? Why would you fuck the dog? Why would you fuck your girlfriend's dog? What? Sick fuck. The sick fuck of the week. It's earned. Earned. Not given. You did. What? No. 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 Last year, we gave the award. People, listen, start tracking now. 2017 had a bunch of sick fucks. I have a sneaky suspicion that 2018 is going to even have sicker fucks. Yes, I think so. Okay, and the sick fuck of the year award starts out. You got to start at the bottom. You got to give me a sick fuck of the week. Okay, a sick fuck of the week. And 2018's (laughs) first sick fuck of the week goes to two California parents. Of two boys, two young children, Vincent Calagrio and Sarah Nilsson were caught by law enforcement officials in Lancaster, California. They were trying to sell not one, but two of their kids for drugs and or money. And if you look at the picture of Vincent and Sarah Nilsson, they look... Like true blue, all American, <coughs> sick fucks of the week. That's that opioid, man. Yo. Motherfuckers trying to sell kids. This is worse than crack. And you think that someone's going to buy the kids? Is there right. a nut? Can, can you be a sick fuck that connects with another sick fuck <laughs> that would actually buy the kids for right. drugs and money? Damn. But what was the price tag? I, I mean, think about <laughs> how. Right, no. Damn. That's that opioid where you could come to that. Decision with your with your wife. Listen, I know you don't like that fucking motherfucker in the back. He doesn't shut up. Why don't we just sell? Well, get rid of him. We get uh, uh, thirty bags of opioids. Yeah, hey, 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 no one will know. And hey, you know, it's like we feel good. He'll he'll be in a better place. Let's fucking do it. Yeah, like your brain, like where you're like, like it's like you're trying to hawk shit, and you're like, fuck it. The thing we could get the most money for is these two kids. Right. Damn. Sick animal. Yeah. Second sick fuck of 2018. Dumbass. Really stupid <laughs> in Los Angeles. There's a new thing going on. Yo, people are crazy. Yeah, of course. There's a new thing called swatting. Yeah, I saw that, but what, what is that? Swatting. Yeah. Not like swatting a, a, a fly or, 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 or a shot. I, I thought swatting. it was like smacking. Like yeah. some. No. What you do is you, you call the, the police and you fake an incident. This sick fuck, mm. Daryl Barres, was arrested on making a hoax phone call to the police in Wichita, Kansas. Okay, he made up a story about a shooting and a kidnapping. Obviously, the police come, SWAT units come. The whole thing was made up. Oh, man. Okay, someone wind up getting shot by the police because they, they, they you know, like innocent people were running. Right. They, and, and it's a whole thing. And, and the person who did it, Daryl Barres, another one looks like a sick fuck. Listen, 
99.9% of the time, if you do this, you look like a sick fuck. We're not just picking random people out of the hat. Right. None of them look like, you know, the happy-go-lucky grandmother. Right, right. <laughs> okay? Usually they look like a sick fuck. So Tyler Barris of Glendale out there in, in, in Kansas, you are a sick fuck. Swatting. This is the thing. People, like, do anything for attention. Anything, like, to, to stir up some sort of... He should be roughed up. There, there should be, you know, you go in the cell. You do shit like that. You need to be roughed up. Oh, and, you mean Wonder Bread bag? No, beaten up. Oh. Like, you know, cops beat him up a little bit because yeah. you can't do that. <laughs> roughed up a little bit. Not the Wonder Bread bag. No, too. no, no. Should I have Miles cue the Wonder Bread bag music? Uh, nah, I don't okay, think Okay, okay, yeah. okay. I was just, just, just checking. Nope. <laughs> Florida's in the house for 2018. You're on the boards already. <laughs> A homeless man broke into a home, nude, went into a closet, was found by the mother of a three-month-old baby. He was in there choking his chicken naked by himself. That's, <laughs> that's, that's that ooh-wee. Yeah, it has to be. He's in the daycare. <laughs> Charge him with uh, burglary, uh, all kinds of other things, exposure. I, I mean, lock him up. <laughs> lock him up. There should be a special place in all jails, 52 states, where all the sick fucks go, like, separate each other. Like, keep the sick fucks amongst the sick fucks. He was in a closet. <laughs> Get out the closet, you freak. A woman, for some reason, on her first date, she had no previous relations with this dude. This wasn't like some sort of uh, crime to get back at him. Okay. She was on a date with a man, a Houston lawyer, who's obviously very wealthy. For some reason, during the date, when she had time alone, she went through around his apartment, which is probably huge, and... For no apparent reason, destroyed two of his Andy Warhol paintings, which are valued at five hundred thousand dollars each. Why? Why do that, you sick fuck? Damn. Why? What was the reason given? It's sick fuck. You, you trying to rationalize what the <laughs> no, reason? No, maybe, given maybe is. she maybe she had some kind of reason. She don't even know money. <laughs> That's some shit that like a scorned woman maybe. Right. Could sort of you could get away with doing and maybe you won't wind up as a sick fuck of the right, week. Okay. Maybe. If there's a really good reason, you won't wind up as a sick fuck of the week. But just on a first date to just get crunk, maybe, I, you know what it probably is? Fucking bath salts. Mm, yeah. You, what's the reason? That's the reason. Sorry. Opioids. <laughs> Florida's on the boards again. A Florida mother was arrested of trying to get her son to shoplift for him. She had her two-year-old son. The police and the authorities in the store saw that she was shoplifting. She put the, the, the goods in the stroller behind the two-year-old son. And when the police and the authorities came, this sick fuck ran and left the two-year-old son there. The kid should never be given back. Uh, yeah, that's it. Yo, you got your son shoplifting, and then when you get caught, you run from Shorty Doo-Wop. <laughs> Shorty Doo-Wop. <laughs> this is a sick fuck of the week recap. This happened on the Lower East Side last year. Oh, okay. Do you remember this? the name um, Jesus Gutierrez? I think so, yeah. You remember, does, that, does that name ring a bell, people? Yes, yes. Jesus Gutierrez from the Lower East Side of Manhattan? This guy... Instead of uh, just walking away from his dysfunctional relationship with his girlfriend, maybe finding a new chick, maybe just moving on, uh, maybe kicking some rocks and just going forward. Yeah. Be upset. You, you, you could be upset. But you couldn't do that. He sodomized his girlfriend's Maltese dog with his fingers and he was uh, uh, molesting the, 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 the canine's genitals. Oh. It was caught on film. The assault lasted 30 minutes. Somehow, some way, Jesus Guterres from the Lower East Side avoided all jail time. Damn. And he got back with his whiz, too. 
She took him back after that. She should be actually the sick fuck of the week. Yeah. That she's the sick fuck. They're fine. Like now they're fine. Now now they're they're together. Yeah. <laughs> um I want to say this. A lot of people laugh at me because I, I I'm scared of animals like in the street. Like we all uh, uh saw the coyote video I posted on my Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram, I'm at at Michael Rapport. Uh you should follow G Monetti on Instagram. You're at what? G Monetti. You spell it? G M O N E T I. So notoriously, I'm not a big fan of stray cats. I'm not a fan of of animals out in the world. That's not my thing. <laughs> That's not my thing. And some people go, oh, you're 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 a pussy, you're this, mm -hmm. you're that. Okay, I'm this, I'm that. What happened now? In Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, in the suburbs of Pennsylvania, a four-month-old kid, obviously this wasn't in a city, it was in the suburbs, was attacked by a raccoon. Oh, yeah. And, and, and you know, fortunately the kid lived, uh, but his face was, you know, was, was severely damaged. You know, they set up a GoFundMe page. A lot of people donated money. A little, little beautiful little kid, yeah. a, a little four-month-old baby was attacked by a raccoon. Yeah. So when you people say, oh, it's just a raccoon. Or, oh, oh, it's just a cat. Yeah, look or at it's it. just a coyote. I'm not going out like that. I'm not getting jumped by a fucking raccoon, a coyote. What are the other animals? Deers. Uh, yeah. Uh, what are the other ones? <laughs> what fucking uh, uh, rat? What? Not even rat, rat, rats. I don't rat, fuck with. Rat. How do you know it's not going to run up your face and bite your fucking nose? You don't know that. You don't know. Well, how do you know you not, might not be the one person? Who you, you're walking in the streets of New York and the rat. I mean, it could happen so quick. Bite your fucking nose and run off. You got rabies. Your nose is, you know, you look like fucking Steve Bannon. You mm -hmm. got rabies coming out of your face. <laughs> this poor kid. So anyway, he's fine. Uh, uh, I think it's it actually a little baby girl. Yeah. Raccoon bit the face all up, dragged, dragged the baby them. off. Could have yeah. killed them. Yeah. Where, where, where all the animal lovers at now? Yeah. Oh, it's just a raccoon. No, yeah. it's, uh, no, sorry. It's just a four month old baby, asshole. Right, right. Fuck that raccoon. Fuck the raccoon. It's about the baby. Like, oh, it's, oh, it's, it's animals. A, no, fuck, fuck the raccoon. Yeah. And fuck you too, Mike. All right, that's it. Listen, I am Rapport Stereo Podcast. Again, I want to thank Wanda Sykes. For rocking with us on the Iron Rap Poor Stereo Podcast. Yo. You you forgot, I forgot to tell you one thing. Oh. You know, you do yoga. Yes, sir. Now you do hot yoga. Yes, sir. Now they have naked yoga. Yes. In on, New York, too. On Wooster Street. They got us uh, for men, mixed, so you could be naked in there with chicks. Makes no sense to me. It's gonna be terrible. Makes no sense I, to I, me. I'm gonna sign up. Go in there. <laughs> I, it makes no sense to me. It, I, I think it's so dumb. Yeah. First of all, I know I'm not welcomed in there. Right. I, I just know uh, by my disposition and the way I present myself that I will, like, they'll accept me maybe <laughs> just on my star status. And they, they, they can't just say, you can't come, you can't. But I know once I'm in there butt ass uh -huh. and I'm snorting away and I'm, <sighs> and I'm doing everything that comes with the, the fucking the Michael Rapport experience. You going to have a jock strap on? It's you got to have. No, your shit going to be flapping around. But right? that, that, they, would, I can't do otherwise, that. Otherwise, because in yoga class, people are in there just in biker shorts. This is naked. Yeah, but I can't be working out with my shit all over the place, man. D then you can't go to the I class. I can't go. I don't know how money. Maybe they got some special jocks for motherfuckers. No, it's not yeah. about the jock strap because you can wear a jock strap in the regular yacht. Oh, right. It's naked. And what's the point of that? The owner is a pervert. He wanted to see y'all. They're like, it's cutting edge. It's Cut that shit. Listen, yoga is very intense. Hot yoga is very intense. Nobody needs to be in there naked. I think you should have a shirt on anyway because you're slipping and sliding from right. your own sweat. It's a whole different story. Um, <laughs> listen, bigger, better, deffer. Shout out to LL Cool J. Oh, yeah. James Todd, what's good? Yo, he was just he he White House um Kennedy Center, right? Kennedy Honor. Center. Yeah. We he, he's in there. First ever rapper. He he deserves it. Couldn't have went to a more influential um I mean, still, like I said, you you, you want problems with James Todd Smith? You want to battle James Todd Smith? You think oh, he's just CI yeah. CSI, CBS? Go ahead, try it. Right. Take Dude. that attitude like Lonzo Ball, like kind of dismissive towards Nas and this and that. Yeah. Take that to these guys. Go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead and try it. 
Go ahead. You, and try you'll it. get the black thought treatment. Yes. Um. So bigger, better, deafer. Uh, we're releasing three podcasts this week. We're going to continue to release three podcasts going forward. On the next podcast, okay, we got my man Donovan Mitchell from New York City, Utah Jazz, rookie. He's nice. Rookie. Rookie. I'm glad in we got opinion, a New York guy. Man. Rookie of the yeah, year. Yeah. Yo, Ben Simmons is nice. And, and it's going to come down to the wire, but you need to consider... Donovan Mitchell, he is busting dudes ass right. and he's picking up steam. Like Ben Simmons, he's dope. Kyle Kuzma, dope. Donovan Mitchell, yo, just because he's in Utah, right. don't sleep. Wait, Check I out Donovan Mitchell. He could shoot. Yo, he, he's, he's, to me, uh, Dwayne Wade-ish and Dame Lillard-ish, and he'd be banging it on people. And they, all those guys respect him. You see, they, they come up to him after the game. They give him, like, words of encouragement. LeBron respects him. KD, yeah. all those dudes, they've all talked about him. Carmelo, uh, uh, Ru Russell Westbrook, who, who's like, when he's playing, in real life, he, he's a nice guy. But when he's playing, he's got to be one of the meanest motherfuckers I've ever seen. Yeah, He come talking to him. These guys respect him. So, yo, we got Donovan Mitchell. I believe it's his first podcast. I'm proud. He's yeah. dope. Yeah. Real cool. Low key. It's a funny, funny interview. But like I said, we're doing three a week. New York. Um, and uh, it's the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast 2018. Bigger, better, deafer. Um, and we, we're doing the damn thing. Once again, thank you for Wanda Sykes. Congratulations to Mr. Morris. And congratulations to all the people. I don't have names. We are literally going raw dog without a bag. You know we don't fact check. Everybody that participated in the Iron Rapport Stereo Podcast Fantasy Football League. Miles, Jordan, take us out with some funk. Like Peace. some smackers. Yes. Yes.